Hello, everyone. Welcome to Secrets of Top Luxury Advisors. I'm Christine Newell, and my special guest today is Lauren Holleran with Gibson Sotheby's International Realty. Uh, I'm so excited to be here with you today, Lauren. So welcome. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here, too. Excellent. So, you know, Lauren's market is definitely one of my favorite areas. Uh, she's in Cambridge, Massachusetts, just a, a very, very vibrant area. And um, last year, Lauren did over $120 million in dollar volume, which is incredible. And she also has a very high average sale price of about $1.5 million. So when we're talking about luxury real estate, Lauren definitely knows her stuff. You know, one of the other things about you, Lauren, that I find fascinating, other, other than the fact that you've been in the business for 18 years, but also the fact that you are a four-time All-American lacrosse player and a former member of the U.S. lacrosse team. So I'm assuming that you probably have that athlete mindset, that mindset of champions, if I had to guess. Well, it's generous of you. Um, <laughs> it was, I was a long time ago, but uh, I actually think when people ask this question, I feel like what the athletics gave me is actually a complete willingness to fail and lose. I don't mind it. No. Uh, I'm like, I love competing and that's what's fun. And I love winning, but like losing doesn't really throw me off. I've had a lot of experience with that too. And I think it allows me to take more chances. I love that. I, I personally feel that failure just makes us stronger and smarter. So I often say to myself, all right, well, you know what? That sucked, but you're a lot smarter right now, right? You've yeah. learned, you've grown. So I, I appreciate that. That's great. So Lauren, tell us, what's the first thing that you do when you wake up in the morning? Uh, usually the wordle. Oh my gosh, me too. I, I right. started today and I couldn't finish. Oh, I got three today. <laughs> today was a good day. Love that. Okay. And what's the last thing you do at the end of the day? How do you kind of wind down and, and shut off like work? Cause I'm sure it's all encompassing. Well, it's not actually such a wind down away from work, but right before I go to bed, I usually look at my calendar for the next day mm -hmm. and then think through all the transitions between each of the things. Sometimes they're physical transitions needing to get from here to there and just like find any flags. Often I've like scheduled something stupidly. I'll be like, okay, I need 50 more minutes between those two things. And it just like settles me down having a vision of the next day. And then that's great. That's great. Do you find that visioning your next day just helps you to be successful and accomplish what you want to accomplish? You know, it helps me in not being anxious about it. Like if I have like a sort of set idea in my head of how the day is going to flow and it always changes, of course, that's the nature of our business, but I'll like, if I haven't done that exercise, I'll, sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night and just like feel this anxiety about what's going to happen the next day. Sounds like you're a planner. Are you a planner? Yeah. 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 I'm a planner. So I get that. Um, so what do you love most about real estate? Uh, well, so you said in the beginning, Cambridge is like such a vibrant place. I can't believe the clients we get to work with. It, they are so much fun. And getting this cross-section of people in all different industries and academia and medicine. And it's just like so stimulating all the time. And I can ask a million questions about anything. And it's just, I just love sort of diving deep into um, people's work and then also, you know, families and what they like to do. And I feel like it's such a wonderful thing about our profession is you get this cross-section of people. You're not just talking to people in finance or not just people in tech, but it's really the, the whole range. What do your clients want most from you? I think they want leadership and really good communication. So mm -hmm. having, they need to know that we know what we're doing. And I think, so having the market knowledge and the confidence and the ability to communicate what the market is doing in an articulate way, in a way that they can understand and absorb is so critical. And once it's kind of like, once they know that you know what you're doing, they calm down and everyone likes a high level of communication. Um, we always say, we're, we're, if anything, we're probably going to over communicate with you and you can tell us to ramp it down, but, um, we want you to know what we know. That's excellent. So I'm hearing definitely over communicate and also, you know, keeping up, keeping track of everything and reassuring and having that confidence perhaps and that wisdom, you know, that you can take them from point A to point B really like anticipating, even I always tell my team members, like the, one of the best things we can do is give a no news call. Like, Hey, Christine was just thinking about you. Wanted you to know, I have no news for you. Yes. You know, everything is cruising along just fine. No red flags. Just wanted to let you know. Yeah. Doing those check-ins. Yep. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you feel that that helps you being proactive that over time, does that avoid some of the calls that might come if people are feeling anxious or upset? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody makes up like happy stories in their head in the absence of information, right? 
any made up story is gonna like have some level of doom and gloom and despair. So we figure if we can like get in front of that and just let them know that there's no need to make up any stories, things are going great. That's, that's great. And I heard you say that you do phone calls. So I'm assuming your method of communication. Do you do a lot of phone calls? Or are you texting? How, how do you handle your the clients you're totally, working with? Totally depends on the client. And some prefer text or email. I think we always ask in our initial meeting, what's your preferred method? And then we really watch them. How are they reaching out to us? And we mirror that behavior. What's the most important thing that you do to market a property right now? I think preparing it for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it's. You, I guess it's luxury real estate we're selling because it's expensive, but like these are real people living real lives with dirty toddlers and, you know, many jobs and living and working at home and all of that. And so if we can get them out and into their new place or into a rental and we have a whole crew of contractors who are amazing and they can come in and just we took a place last week from I mean, it was like really grim, but a nice place. It's just real life like takes a toll on property. So um, it took our guys like seven days to get the whole thing. It really, we got the kitchen cabinets refaced, the countertops replaced, the you know floors done, windows done, everything repainted, all staged. And you come in, you're like, boom, wow, this is incredible. It's like, I never get sick of those transformations. That's great. And you feel that's an important part of your job then to kind of get a property ready to market. Totally. And having the relationships with the tradespeople is so critical because everyone's so busy all the time and especially now. But if we have these guys who do all this work for us, they're so responsive. And if our if we left it to our clients, we're like, how about you get the place repainted and your cabinets repainted? It's like, forget about it. And they have no interest in that. So for us to be able to just like get it done so easily without any friction, it's such a benefit to our clients. We hear from them. They're just like, this couldn't have been any easier. Can't believe the outcome. We're so happy. Wow. It sounds like that is definitely something you're good at and it's part of your value proposition. So, um, and I, I do think in the luxury sector, there is an expectation that we are very involved, you know, in getting the property ready and, but if you do it, you know, in the manner that you have it down, you have the relationship with the relationships with the vendors and yeah. It's a total win-win because then we create this beautiful collateral that helps market ourselves, right? We're selling the property, but every single listing is an opportunity to sell it ourselves too. And the better we can make something look, the, you know, the more people want to work with us. So I think it's, you know, I always say to our clients, they're like, you do all this construction management for free. And I'm like, it's a win-win. We're going to have something beautiful to sell. It's going to yeah. help out your house and we're going to get more business. Absolutely. So let's shift gears a little bit. And a lot of top advisors in real estate spend a lot of time in the car, right? I mean, when you're driving places and showing property and, and maybe, you know, you're walking to different places, but I have to ask you, do you have a go-to song when you're driving right now and you're going on a big appointment? What might that be? hundred um, percent. Do you know the song Big Energy by Lato? Oh my gosh. That's one of mine. I love that song. <laughs> hey, that's the best. It gets me so fired up. I love that song. Me too. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. That's a good one. Okay. Um, let's play a little game hot or not. So I'm going to ask you a few different, I'm going to say a few different things and you're going to tell me from your opinion, are they hot right now or are they not? Okay. So tiny houses, hot or not? Not. Video, hot or not? Definitely hot. Yeah, for sure. Um, TikTok. Oh, you know, no. I don't know. You got to answer. answer. I guess I'm not. Okay. The real estate market right now. Trick question. Yeah. What was that? Definitely hot. Good. I love that. Sneakers at work. Absolutely hot. Hot. Yeah. Zoom meetings. Yeah. I still love them. Hot. Home office. Not. So green, the color green kitchen. That's such an interesting one. I just worked with the developer on putting in a green kitchen and sage green. So not like bright Kelly green, though. I love your dress. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hot. I think it's hot. I think it's a new trend. So people. I, I I'm feeling it. I'm feeling them. So that was, that was definitely really fun. Thanks for playing along. What are your top three skills, you know, when it comes to real estate and working in this, in the luxury sector of real estate specifically? Probably number one would be communicating. So <laughs> being able to not just the, um, not just the frequency of it, but being able to communicate what I want pretty accurately and have people understand it, I think is, is, um, is a help. Um, I would say, uh, solving problems. Like I love problems and have been in the business long enough that, 
it happens, but it's rare to see a new problem. Mm -hmm. And when there are new problems, I have a pretty good sense about how to go unwinding them. And yeah. I love the feeling of a client coming in with a problem and they're very anxious and don't know what to do. And then being able to just like calm the whole situation down, unwind it, find a solution and seeing their relief is so rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, so that's two. I'll say number three. Um, I think the um, being able to understand and present data well okay. um, so clients understand the market. So communication, problem solving, presenting data. What are you most proud of? Probably my four kids. They're Ooh. so much fun. They're, uh, I have two sets of twins who are, some are turning, two of them are turning 13 this week and two of them turn 18 in a couple of weeks. And wow. um, they're just terrific kids and so much fun to be with. And they can negotiate a deal like no one's business. Kids are resourceful. Right? What do you treat yourself to when you want to reward yourself? I, I imagine that you're busy, right? The amount of business you've done, the market you're in, it's a very, it's a highly competitive market. You have to be in the right mindset and you also have to celebrate your wins. So how do you reward yourself for a job well done? Um, my best reward is um, going somewhere where I don't have cell service. So mm -hmm. um, going for a hike in the White Mountains, something just taking a day and being like, I can be completely off and my team's amazing. They're very supportive. Um, so our clients don't get left in the lurch, but that's that's the best sort of unwinding for me. Speaking of rewards, what's your absolute favorite meal in the world? Uh, any meal that we have a family house up in Ontario. And when we're all up there with my sisters and my parents and all my nieces and nephews, and it's any meal that we have all together up there out on the terrace. And uh, it's the best. Oh, that sounds so special. So I guess um, another question, and this is actually our last question. Um, what would you tell your younger self? Kind of looking back, what would you tell your younger self? You want to tell your younger self, like, don't stress out. But really, when I think about it, I'm like, but would I have accomplished what I accomplished if I hadn't been stressed out? Like, maybe not. And <laughs> I'm like so delighted to have built this business. I'm so grateful. So I don't know. I think if she knew, if my younger self knew that everything was going to be great, like, would I have gotten here? <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe I not. Have, I don't have any good wisdom for her. I think just keep the struggle <laughs> struggle on. Game on. I think that's a good one. Just keep going, yeah. right? That's probably some good advice and have faith maybe. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's incredible. So um, thank you so much for today. This was excellent. I uh, just loved kind of hearing some different tips and learned so much about communication and all that you do uh, in the luxury sector, which again, you are just one of the elite uh, in real estate, you know, when we look at the the different markets in the country and everything that you're doing, and of course, the fact that you are with um, Gibson Sotheby's International Realty uh, within our brand, which to me is just the most incredible brand in the world. So thank you so much for your time today. Everybody, um, follow Lauren, Lauren Holleran, Gibson Sotheby's. She's on social media. Make sure you follow her Instagram, her Facebook, reach out to her. She's just simply incredible. And thank you so much for sharing your big energy with us today, Lauren. Thank you, Christine. It was great to talk with you. Awesome. Take care, everybody. Bye.